It's time for Around the Ozark Sports Scene, brought to you by Fast Break Sports, the largest selection of cards and card supplies in southwest Missouri. Now here's your host, Scott Perrier. Welcome to Around the Ozark Sports Scene, episode 22. I am Scott Perrier. As always, thank you for tuning in and joining us. A uh, special guest today is a retiring Republic high school girls basketball coach, Chris Flood, who won a couple state championships and more than 500 games and, and just a great career down there. So we'll visit with Chris here in a few minutes. Uh, we start out each week with our look ahead segment, kind of giving you a little preview of things to watch uh, in the local, regional, national sports world and what we're paying attention to. And of course, that would start with uh, March Madness, the uh, NCAA tournament, uh, both the men and women down to their Sweet 16 rounds, uh, been very chalky so far, meaning uh, favorites advancing. So if you uh, picked a lot of upsets in your bracket, you probably can crumple those things up right now because it's not going well for you, I would imagine. But it uh, looks like UConn on the men's side and, and the defending national champion, and then, of course, South Carolina on the women's side, the perennial number one all year, look very tough. So we'd expect those two to continue on rolling right through this weekend as we get down to a Final Four for the following weekend. Uh, Missouri State Baseball Bears are back home this weekend. Get out and check them out. Uh, they're playing a series Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Hammonds Field against Illinois State. It's a Missouri Valley Conference series. Bears are 10-12 and 12 overall and 1-2 and two in the Valley. Uh, won the opener last weekend at Indiana State in a clash of the uh, favorites in the league and then dropped the next two. So the Bears will be looking to uh, bounce back. They've got a Tuesday night game this week against SEMO coming in before Illinois State comes in on the weekend. So go check that out. Uh, Bears uh, continue to be led offensively by the sophomore from Lebanon, Zach Stewart. He's hitting three fifty one with eight homers and 15 runs driven in. Uh, he'll be an NFL, or NFL, MLB draft candidate uh, shortly. And then freshman Caden Bogenpohl has six homers and 19 RBIs. So those are two big bats that, uh, as the weather warms up, should uh, – Send the ball flying over at Hammonds Field and over the fence. Uh, guys to watch in that regard. Drury Baseball is off to a great start in GLVC play at 9-3. and three. They're 11-11 overall, and they're home this weekend for a big series with uh, rival Quincy. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series to uh, avoid playing on Easter. They'll play two on Friday starting at noon. So if you haven't been to uh, Mark Orley Field at Metter Park, the renovated uh, Metter Park with turf, artificial turf, uh, just a, a lot of new amenities over there. Get out and check it out as the Panthers take on Quincy and what should be good weather days, Friday and Saturday in particular there. Finally, it's opening day for Major League Baseball, the, the real opening day, not the one that the uh, Dodgers and Padres played a two-game series overseas here last week. But uh, get started on Thursday. The Cardinals have a very tough uh, opening task when they go to L.A. to play the Dodgers in the series, the Royals will be home starting Thursday with Minnesota. And, of course, the Twins pick to win the uh, division as well. So a tough start uh, anticipated for both those teams. Uh, when I look at the Cardinals for the year, I really like the offense. they got some good young guys. Jordan Walker in his second year should be fun to watch. Uh, Mason Wynn getting a shot at shortstop. Uh, but the pitching scares me. they got a lot of old arms in that rotation, and we'll see how they can hold up. And on the Royals' side, they locked down Bobby Witt for a long-term contract. Love that. Uh, Vinny Pascantino's back. Got some good young players to go around Salvi Perez. They brought in some veteran pitchers. Expect the Royals to maybe surprise some people and be in contention for a while in that uh, central division of the AL. Our special guest on Around the Ozark sports scene today is the retiring head basketball coach of the Republic Lady Tigers program. He was 530 and 178 in 25 years as the boss man at Republic. He is Chris Flood. Chris, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me on. You betcha. Um, announced the retirement about three weeks ago. Um, any second guesses of the decision or are you pretty, pretty solid in what you uh, decided? No, I I'm, I'm, was very comfortable with, with the decision to go ahead and step away. So uh, it just, it wasn't, you know, so much the coaching. I love to keep coaching as far as that goes, but uh, some of the other stuff was starting to 
kind of dwell on me a little bit with some of the teaching and things like that. So, uh, you know, I'm not totally going to say I'm done with coaching. If something would have come up, I would probably look to step back in if I could. Sure, absolutely. I, a lot of guys do that, and, and especially if there's a uh, like a private school opportunity or probably don't want to go out of state because you're, you're pretty much a Republic clever guy, aren't you? I am. I am. Now, I tell you, I have a new uh, grandson up in Kansas City, so that, that's not that that's that far away, but, uh, you know, you, you just never know about something like that happening. Absolutely. Uh, as far as getting up there. Yeah, so, and, and Kansas would qualify as one of those states that would not be Missouri. And, correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> well, uh, just a great career. Congratulations on that. And, and of course, you and I go back to your days as a player at Clever um, when I was a pup reporter at the News Leader and covering the high schools, and you guys had pretty much a, a dynamo in that Class 1 uh, world back then. Um, I'm trying to think. It was Flood and Kabetsky. Was it Sean Buzzard? It was, uh, wasn't Yancey was. Little on that team, too? He was the year before me, uh, yeah. but that was we were still having a – we had a pretty good run his senior year. And my junior year, we had a pretty good team. Just kept running into the wrong team in the in the quarterfinals. And that would be Run Scott County it. Central, right? And Ronnie that Cookson. Was Scott County, yeah, Scott, Scott County Central. That's we lost them two years in a row in the quarterfinal. Which uh, pro- you know, you guys probably in, in like most of the people in the area considered that the uh, state championship game at that point too in, in Class One felt like it because you know once uh when they came out with the final rankings we were always they were first and we were second so i felt like the respect was there from the from the voters as far as what they thought about that was that now who were your coaches at clever back then well my for three years my freshman through junior year i had steve ketchum uh, he he came in. He followed uh, Kent Hedgepeth. Uh-huh. Hedgepeth was there, and Ketchum come in and took that position. Uh, and then my final year was 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 Garden was Greg Garden yeah. my senior year. Yeah, Ketchum decided to go to Brants. He took the job at Brants. Okay, and, and so. you know, with all those guys who who were just great coaches. Did you kind of catch a coaching bug at a young age? Or when did you kind of decide that's what you wanted to do? You know, i tell you what happened. is It was a garden contacted me. Uh, I think I was a sophomore in college and asked me if I would, he would just, he had just got the, the public job. And uh, he asked me if I would be interested in coming in and being his seventh and eighth grade coach and i i had filled around with stuff in college and i just kept finding myself going back to education and want to coach and that it timed out just really well and, so and that, that was junior I, high boys I was, though, right right yeah. right and i was fortunate enough to you know be able to coach while i was still in college at that time they they would do emergency coaches or whatever they called it and uh, that's how I basically got my foot into Republic was through that through that position, and always thank you know always thank Greg for that opportunity because uh, who knows what would have happened. But it timed out when I graduated college. Uh, just happened to be a teacher that was going to step into another position, and a PE job opened up and. I got a call that summer, and the shortest interview I ever had lasted about five minutes. And I, they said, "Do you want it?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> rest is, you know, the rest, as they say, the rest is history. Now, was that? Did you assist McWhorter, Dave McWhorter? I did. Yeah. I went ahead in my first year of teaching, officially teaching. I still had junior high boys, and then. Uh, The following year is when his assistant, Mike Thorne, was stepping away, and I just, I just, I put my name in for it, and 
uh, did that for three years. Was there with, with Coach McCorder? Yeah, was there an adjustment period for you know? I mean, you'd played boys basketball, you coached junior high boys, uh, coaching girls the first time. Was there an adjustment for you? Uh, definitely, <laughs> they're a little more outspoken. <laughs> it took me some time to adjust, uh-huh. and they they really initiated me the my first year because at that time we still had like an athletic hour. And uh, Coach McCorder was an administrator at that time. So he could go do last hour athletics. And I'd go over there, and I was, you know, just fresh. And they they kind of got – they picked on me a little bit. So it took took me some time to adjust to the girl side. But in, once, it started, once it started clicking, it was fine. In that regard, how different is Chris Flood at year 25 – in terms of dealing with with that uh, situation, than the the one who started, what did you learn over the years? Well, for sure, I felt like girls. Once you set down, you know, set things down, they are more disciplined. Uh, you know that they you do have to pay more attention to details and fundamentals and things like that. And you, you hear people say that. But I truly do believe that, that girls are more apt to really concentrate on that stuff uh, as far as that goes. But, you know, I was, and you you watched me, coach. I was pretty intense (laughs) at the beginning. But I'm telling you the last, probably the last five or six years, I have really, I've kind of calmed down quite a bit if, if you ask people. I was going to say at the beginning, you know, <laughs> well, and, and what's funny yeah. is, you know, and, and having known you for so long and, and relationships with, with several of your, your players, you know, not only from my time of covering them, but then being at Drury for 11 years, um, I kind of reached out to some of them last night. Uh, I won't mention any names. Amanda Newton, Alice Heinzler, came into <laughs> Becca Meyer, maybe some Tori Mooneyham mixed in there, but, uh, you know, I said, tell me some good flood stories that we can kind of hit him with. And not a single one of them uh, was able to ignore the sport coach stories. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that there were there were bets in the stands and in, in the coaching staff on how soon the sport coat would come flying off. I guess my question is, why did you ever wear a sport coat in the first place if it was coming off? I don't know. My coaching staff, they, they like to dress up, uh-huh. you know, at, at that time. And my wife, she... Hey, I didn't control my outfits, Scott. They controlled my outfits. Who did? Your wife they, and the coaches or players or what? Well, in particular, my wife and Coach Moody and him. Uh-huh. They picked they out would, your clothes for you? Oh, they yes, they'd get to get. Yeah, you would talk, and I'd have my stuff laid out. Uh, that was what I was supposed to do. They liked to coordinate. Did you um, learn a technique for getting the sport coat off quicker? Was it pretty no, tough at times? No, it it was tough. I've I've struggled. I had a few struggles. <laughs> uh, I had a kid this this year. It came off. I can't. It was uh, it may have been our last regular season game, and I was trying to put it back on after the game, and I couldn't get couldn't get one of my arm sleeves or something to function, and I had. One of my uh, one of my junior kids just she kind of pulled on it and helped me, <laughs> and that was we had a good time next day at practice with that. That was she a goes, sign that. It, Flood, you, did you know who helped you? <laughs> I said no. I just know someone. It was uh, it was one of her players, Hemi Watson. She goes, Coach, that was me. <laughs> that real sweet voice. And maybe that was a sign that it was time to give it up after 25 years when you can't get the coat back <laughs> yeah. on, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mentioned I did, some. Uh, I, did, I did have to pull it off the last game there against Kickatoo, <laughs> but part of that reason was because that gym was sweltering hot. I, I was, it was hot in that gym that night when we played that district championship game. Yeah, I think they're going to rename it the sauna at Glendale. You know, it's Jim's got its own little name there, the vault at Great Center Bank Arena, the, the sauna at Glendale. Well, I, I mentioned some players, um, you know, that, I, that I've that i known through the years and 
and reached out to. But you know, you look at twenty five years and and over five hundred wins, and and I think it was what two state championships in 04 and twelve, and I think I counted up nine nine or ten COC titles and district titles. You, you you did a great job of coaching, but you had some pretty good players along the way too, didn't you? I did. I really did. We've we've been honestly to hold that consistency. That's you have to have players, and uh, we have been blessed for a long time to have. You know, just never had. I felt like, you know, my my theory is if you. If you get back-to-back classes that might struggle a little bit, especially at the large school level, uh, you could you could run into some trouble. And we just never seemed like we encountered that. Uh, you know, as long as you got two or three kids out of each group, kind of stuck with it. Uh, was really blessed in that part. So yeah, I've had some. That's really nice players, and a lot of them have continued at the next level. Uh, you've mentioned a couple there uh, with with the Heinzler and and Plotner. Uh, I got the privilege; she was one of my first kids I coached, so um, she was she's definitely one of the best best players I coached. Uh, you know, thinking of the jury kids, Stanfield. Mm-hmm. Brooke Stanfield, I had the privilege of coaching her. Um, O.C. Sparkman, there's there's just, there's a lot. There's a lot of kids I can name. But Kelsey Locke is probably one of the most talented kids I had. Cause just because she was, I felt like at her time, she was unique. She was that big six one six two kid that could play your point guard spot. At that time, we, I just hadn't, I'd never, I never had that before at Republic, but she was a kid that could play on the outside, but then go into the post if she had to. You know, I, the names I mentioned, uh, Amanda Newton and, and Heinzler and, and Cayman Beckemeyer, the most recent one. Did yeah, you see yeah. some? I can't, I can't forget Cayman. Yeah. Cayman. Yeah. Don't forget Cayman. Did Cayman, you see, see Cayman some? was. She was she was again kind of one of those uh for us one of those unicorn type kids. She was just so special in things that she could do. Just handle the ball, she could guard. She's probably one of the best defensive players I've I've had. Probably I'd put her in my top three defensive players. But then also go into the post. But uh I'll let you, you you go on. Yeah, well, and I was just going to say, Cayman now, of course, uh, a freshman at Missouri State, finished up uh, a great season with the Lady Bears. And, and like you just said, I, I noticed, uh, you know, in the um, like the Valley Championship game, she's down there guarding a post. And she's, what, about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, maybe? 5'10", probably 5'10". Yeah, yeah. And um, what I was going to ask you was, you know, when I when I think of, of Alice Heinzler and Cayman and Amanda and, and all the great ones you had there, did you see something in them maybe coming up? Did you know you had something special? Was it maybe something intangible with them that got you excited? That I, I understand Cayman lasted what all of basically one quarter or one game on JV before you told Tori <laughs> that yeah I've got her now. Yeah, yeah that that was pretty much that that deal was sealed once kind of saw her. I mean, we knew in junior high what her potential was, but once you saw her in practice, there was, you know, and, and this uh, to me, this is another thing with girls, is you can have like a freshman that can immediately impact the varsity level. Sometimes with boys, I feel like they, they have to, they're just a little bit behind cheering, but we were, you know, we like I said, we've been blessed with some freshman kids that could impact a varsity game right out of the gate. And of course, she was one. Uh, but, you know, she just, I think the the main intangible with all those kids is just how competitive they are. And still to this day, you know, I, I hang around with them and you know, still friends with them and things like that. And there's still, it doesn't matter if we're playing 
you know, pitching horseshoes or something like that. They're going to be competitive the whole time. And they just didn't like to lose, period. They it ate them up. Alice uh, brought up a story about um, no ball practices, that uh, when, you, when you're really aggravated, there might be a no ball practice. And um, I guess her junior year, there was one, and you didn't lose another game the rest of the way. Was that a, was that uh, we, a floodism? Yeah. We called it a character-building practice. <laughs> we had, I remember exactly when it happened, we uh, we had lost, not to say anything negative about Carthage, but we got, we got beat down at Carthage, not just got beat, we got beat pretty good. And just it didn't look like we were focused, so... Uh, told the kids we're going to going to have a character building con or a practice next day, and I don't think I hadn't done for him any, but that group didn't have any clue what it was, and it literally seemed ran out rack balls. We just conditioned and focused, and we'd stop and talk and get redirected, and just one of those. They and. After that, like you said, it was we didn't lose another game. Uh, Amanda brought up a great I'll question. Tell you, I, I, I want to tell you who introduced that to me. And that was Greg Garden. <laughs> yeah, when uh, I, and it was a. It wasn't even basketball; it was a baseball game. He was our baseball coach too for, uh-huh. for us. We came home, and he took the bus straight to the baseball field, turned the lights on. We go. What in the world's going on? And we went out, and I'm telling you, we were in pole to pole for a long time. I would say Greg Garten as a player. That's where I got that from. From Garten, yeah. That if he had, if he ever heard a no ball practice as a player, he'd just gone home. But Garten, because that would mean no <laughs> I don't shooting. Know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, another player, former player, wanted to know how many weddings have you been to? Uh, since you started, because you've had to spend a lot of money on wedding gifts, haven't you? We have, and it, I'm telling you, especially the uh, things like it's been more lately, and it's it's like it could be every weekend. But it, it's I really I'm you know I'm blessed in that sense that they still you know keep us uh, respect us and keep us in mind. Uh, yeah, Coach Mooneyham and I have attended several, several weddings, several weddings. Uh, you know, they're starting to have, starting to have their own kids, and just getting to see them, and it's it's doesn't make you feel old, but it makes you feel like I said, it makes me feel tremendously blessed to have been part of of so many kids' lives. Well, and and speaking of blessed, I know you 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 were. Um elated to have Tori Mooneyham at your side for, for how many of those 25 years as assistant? She's, she's been all 25. All 25, wow. And, and you know, I look all at, 25. you know, Brock Blancett at, at Nixa. You know, he, he waited for his chance to to replace Jay Osborne there and got it and has done uh, fabulous things. And you look at Leslie Hanchi yeah. at Kickapoo, what she did as an assistant, all those years biding her time. Um, I know Tori's a candidate for, to replace you. I personally, I you know, I, I think it's a no-brainer. She ought to get get her chance. Do you do you like what she brings to the table? Yes, I mean, if you if you want a if you want a person that is truly black and orange through and through, you can't find a better person. Uh, she is Republic, no doubt about it. I mean, of course, going to school here. Came back and coached here. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that she is. She is capable. She's ready. She is ready to be a head coach. She probably could have done it several years ago, but uh, I feel like, just my personal opinion, she should be the obvious candidate to to uh, take over the program, and hopefully make. I hope they recognize that and, and do the right. Do the right deal, make the right choice. That's just, but like I said, sometimes 
opinions, my opinion, no necessarily going to come through, but that's that's what I would do in this scenario. You know, the her most valuable role, and, and she'll admit it, was either trying to calm you down or convince the officials just to keep walking and you'd be okay. <laughs> uh, how many how many technicals did she save you from getting? You think over twenty five years? I don't know. It's probably been several, <laughs> several. She's a good. I think they have them in football. Sometimes they call them the get back person. Yeah, yeah. And they they can pull pull on the coach. She was really good at that about getting a hold of me and getting me back. I will say that. Not that happened several times. I I know that. Well, and she also had to go retrieve the sport coat because you weren't going to get your own sport coat, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. She. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's. She could. She set it back on the chair. Or whatever. Just. <laughs> just do that. What was the shortest time that it ever stayed on? Do you remember? I, I just, God, I can't. Uh, Were it, there any first quarter jacket I, removals? I don't think. Maybe. I think I could survive first halves. Mm-hmm. It was probably more towards that second half when it, you know, especially if it was an extremely intense game, which. We had a tendency to to find ourselves in, as far as that goes. But uh, ever since they changed, I, I, you know, you start seeing these coaches now, and they wear more pretty casual, either coaching gear or you know, no no ties and shirts and stuff. I I kind of bought into that. That's what I like. But (laughs) oh, we get to these important games and they. I, they take over. The two take over, and they say, "No, we're dressing up." So, who was your? I go uh, with them. Who was your favorite rivalry? The one that you knew that you had to be on top of your game against that other coach or that other school uh, every time out. Of course, we've you know, Nix has become a, a big rival. The last, I would say, my last. Let's say my last ten years. That one. Me and, and and Coach Perryman and even Coach Middleton, uh, we had we've had some really good games. Coach Talbert now, uh, they they were always a rival. There's always you know the connection with Republican Willard. Uh, we've had we've had some good games with them, and then of course uh, the time that. When Yancey Little was coaching Ozark, that one, that was, at that time, was a rival. And that was it, your best friend, right, growing up? Yeah, correct, correct. And then just that, you add that little piece in, and it was always a little more, you know, intense as far as going against each other. And don't forget Kickapoo. And kick poo. I've, I've, I've got focused on COC. Yeah, kick poo. Kick poo is, and of course, they've, up till lately, they've always kept us on the schedule, which was always nice because it, it, that helped, you know, when it came district times and things like that, but just also a good team. So, yeah, we had some really, Leon Neal and those groups, we had some really good games with them. Uh, Pender. Uh, as far as that goes, but you know, they're that conference is changing next year, so um, they're gonna they're gonna have the chances to see each other uh, for sure now. Well, I you know, gonna wrap it up with my last question about why Republic for twenty five years because you know you'd your your best friend was the AD at Ozark, and I'm sure he had a chance uh, openings to probably try to pry you away and when you win 500 games uh, over a career you're going to get opportunities but uh, you never left and then I, I guess one thing I would think immediately because I know all those administrators is you've got a school filled with former coaches that are in leadership and, and they understand parents and expectations and and everything else it was yeah. that a big part of it I yes and it just you know honestly 
I don't like change very much. So I once I got settled and and I just I knew what what the kids were capable of and I'd been kinda of silly to to probably step away or even look at something different. But uh I've had you know, I've went through several administrators. Uh Dr. Pam Hedgepeth, she's she's one that sticks out to me. I've had, you know, Greg was my A D, Leo Clant was my A D, uh, and lately Trevor. Trevor's been he's been tremendous to work with. He's he's one that you can approach and go in and have a discussion and he gets it. I mean it helps being that coach and you know, he's the son of a coach and he knows how things are when parents get you know, maybe just a little bit off tracks or they think something's going the other way. That's it's always helpful to have those type of people. Uh to you know, just for communication pieces and things like that. Uh and just someone you can you know, you know, people you can lean on and talk to and uh not be judged. And community support. I know with the way Republic's growing right now, that's only gonna get better, isn't it? Yes, and uh always felt like we had pretty you know, really good crowds. Uh I feel like we've always been backed extremely well. Uh you know, that, that final game up there at Glendale, that that was played in front of some pretty good crowds, but that was that was a pretty good at that was one of the better atmospheres I've been in. You know, it's when you're having kids having trouble hearing you and I'm especially me, I'm fairly loud, so <laughs> uh you know, when you you see that and that it's that type, you know, it's it's a really good atmosphere. Well, I, I've enjoyed covering you, and, and congratulations on a great career. And, and I'll just give you one chance to answer this question: that if you took all those Republic administrators and and you let Garton come into play in your prime, who wins a one-on-one tournament between you and Trevor and Timmy and Tony Armstrong and Garton and Amanda Newton and and Tori? Uh, who, who comes out on top in that? If you're if you're talking. Players in their prime. That's great, Garden. Did you really just say great that? Garden. Yeah, you're going to give talking, him that satisfaction. I'm telling you, if you're talking in their prime, I'm taking Greg Garden. What about now? <laughs> now, now I'm taking. I'd probably take Tim Brown. Well, Timmy can shoot it, can he? Yeah. yeah, and he's still in. Tim's in good shape. He yeah. keeps he takes care of himself. He's he's not like me. That uh, lets things go, and you know, he he he's in pretty good shape. Who'd be the best trash talker now of all those? Oh, trash talker. Tony's probably still got game, doesn't he? Tony, Tony would, Tony. Yes, Tony does still have. I tell you, he is before practices start a lot of times. Like especially if you get, I've had you know Kent Hedgefest helped me the last three or four years. You get them two together before practice, <laughs> and it's uh, it's entertaining. I can only imagine it, it. It loosens things up. It makes you feel a lot better. I bet. Well, Chris, congratulations. It's my friend, tenth practice. Yeah, I bet it does. Yeah. Congratulations on a great career. Best of luck to you in whatever that next step is, and and appreciate your time. Hey, thanks so much for doing this. It's, uh, like I said, Scott, it's always fun to talk to you. You kind of, you always tweak the memories and things like that. It helps, you know, to think about going back to that stuff and just, all the great things that uh, they've been fortunate enough to be a part of. I appreciate that. Thanks, Chris. Okay, thank you. As we do each week, we finish up with Scott's thoughts, my ramblings and musings about the world of sports, things that are on my mind. And we start out this week with, uh, at this taping of the podcast, it appears that maybe the Bears are going to bring Conzo Martin back as their 
head men's basketball coach. Of course, Missouri State fired Dana Ford uh, about three weeks ago. It's been kind of quiet on that front as Missouri State AD Kyle Motes, uh, President Cliff Smart checking out candidates. Um, this is kind of a weird feeling on Conzo coming back. Of course, he had a three-year run with the Bears back from 2008 to 11. Uh, his final season produced uh, the first Missouri Valley Conference regular season title and only. And, uh, of course, he left that uh, job for Tennessee, then went to Cal, and then was at Mizzou for five years. It didn't go real well uh, up in Columbia for him. He's been out of basketball coaching now for a couple of years. It'll be interesting to see how he uh, adapts now to the new world with NIL and the transfer portal running crazy. I know the Bears have had their top seven players either in the portal or have graduated, so uh, Zoe's got some work to do um, coming back. Like I said, kind of a, a weird, okay reaction to that hire. Not a bad hire, not a sexy hire, but we'll see how, how that turns out because it's a guy that had won here before, and we'll see how that transpires. Get back with me in, in about uh, three years, and we'll uh, we'll be able to reevaluate this much better. The Chiefs uh, dealt away Janarius Sneed, their outstanding cornerback, last week for a couple uh, later-round draft picks with the Titans last week. Uh, on the surface, you're kind of going, what? But the Chiefs had serious salary cap issues, had to get under the cap number uh, to make some other things happen and fill some other needs because they're pretty, uh, pretty solid back there in the secondary with or without Sneed. He's 27 years old, which is kind of on the back end of the uh, – the age thing for cornerbacks, by the time you paid him his money, which was about $20 million or more, um, you know, and if you sign him up to a multi-year deal, at the end of that deal it's looking like you've got an old guy back there that may not uh, still have the speed that he had to, to cover before. So just a, ne- a necessary move for the Chiefs, one that maybe fans don't like, but in the long run it's one that's going to pay off and some other guys they'll be able to afford now and, and to keep. But like Chris Jones, they were able to keep him around too. So – um, finally, congratulations to the Evangel Valor. They uh, finished uh, their first trip to the in- or NAIA Sweet 16 in about uh, 15 years by reaching the Elite Eight over the weekend. Uh, Coach Burke Capel, who was a guest on our last podcast, doing a great job with that program. They came up just a little short against the number one team in the uh, country, Grace, in that uh, Elite Eight round. So great job by the Valor going to be fun to watch uh, how their program continues to rise under Capel with the new Valor Center opening on campus uh, next year as a, a nice shiny new toy for Coach Capel to go recruit people with. Thanks again to our sponsor, Fast Break Sports. It's baseball season. That means you ought to have the bug for sports collectibles, whether it's cards or memorabilia. Fast Break Sports is your only place in town to go get uh, get that stuff, the largest selection in the Ozarks. Go see them. And once again, thanks for listening. We appreciate you, and we will see you next week here on Around the Ozarks Sports.